I imagine that watching the dailies was a treat. Um, watching these two guys, letting these guys loose. Um, you said at the Q&A that it was 50%, 25 and 25. Could you discuss sure. how that model sort of established itself perhaps? Yeah, I mean, we, we wrote a script and you know, the scenes were, there were, there were not any, really except for maybe some of the dancing stuff, like there weren't really any improvised scenes. Uh -huh. um, but we did have like, for instance, the art gallery scene, we didn't know what art was going to be on the wall. So we just let them improvise all of that. And what was there's another scene that was all improvised. But uh, did you the know lighthouse scene. the lighthouse scene? Because in the script it was just written that they're up there taking. Like we had him leaning that uh -huh. whole thing, but uh -huh. then we decided it'd be more fun if we're like just do some Jim Carrey impressions. And a lot of times yeah. we build on what was in the script. You know, take one would be kind of close to what was in the script, and then from there we kind of right. so, know, build out. Uh, so the geyser scene that's another example. One yeah, had a bit in the script and it got. We like had them watching, and oh, so. Yeah. We didn't know exactly like when the geyser would go off, so we had to just be like, just keep talking about the geyser till it goes off, uh -huh. while we're slowly dolling in. And then um, it went off twice. And then it went off twice, which is like the best, like happy accidents all along the way. Joke. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like for the loosely based stuff, which is twenty five percent, I would say, you know, they we would show the script to them or discuss the script to them the night before and. We would, you know, Earl Lynn or Paul would say, like, I don't think this sounds right. This isn't what I would say. And so we would, what would you say? So then they would kind of reword things in their own, their own way. How does, um, there's a lot of visual comedy elements. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking of random, like, random stuff like um, the, I forget what you call these light bright devices in the middle the of the night. Glow sticks. Oh, yeah, the glow sticks. Yeah, the glow sticks, yeah. yeah. And that's a very vi that's a visual gag that works extremely efficiently well, yeah. and and you and you kind of got a sense that um, hearing audiences' reactions that that there was a lot of that in the film that there was a lot of um, visual gags, and I was wondering how you how you merge both worlds about writing the gags, writing that thing, and then obviously they're ad libbing, they're having fun with. I mean, I mean, I think Erlen has like a great physical like presence anyway and humor. You know, he's just like. He's so tall, he's like lumbers around, and he also has this, um, he, he, his feet, he can't feel his own feet, mm -hmm. so he has sort of like a... He can't what? Stunt. He has some, something, something wrong, okay. he's like numb in both of his feet, okay. so he's just kind of... I he's always know. talking about if he stepped on like a nail, he, he would, would never know feel it. He saw it. So it's just, and it's also fun that you have this like large man, and this, you know, smaller guy, and um, so th there's physical comedy right there. And I think that we kept everything within a structure. We adhered to the structure of the scenes, even if they were largely improvised. Uh -huh. so I, I think actually the balance between um, the improvisation and the... What's on the page? The parameters of what the scene was going to be uh -huh. um, was great because yeah. then they were able to work. It, it wasn't just you know completely open-ended. They were able to work within that structure, and I think that the comedy is sharper uh, because of that. Also, you would get to like a location. Like I went scouting, and you know, just with that in mind, knowing that you're trying to make a comedy, so you go to Vic and you go to the Black Beach, and you see this like rock that's like erect and looks like a penis, and it's like, well, I mean, yeah. so so the, that's a, I was gonna ask you a question about that. There's actually like one of the sight gags that I appreciated the most is when he gets out of the jeep to um, to you know traverse the the the, the, the yeah exactly. And I was thinking most likely that was an experience that you had lived or you had seen, so then... Well, someone else actually lived we, that. that not, okay. not, not to that degree, not, but yeah. we, you know, before we were, um, before, when we were getting ready to write the script, we looked at some travel logs. Okay. People, like, like, photo, like, photographers going to Iceland and doing this whole month-long trip, and we saw... That yeah, this, what happened to them was they... It's like this French photographer, right? Yeah. He had a Hummer. Mm-hmm. He and his girlfriend saw this body of water and they were just like it was the first time they'd come to yeah. a crossing like that which uh -huh. I guess are pretty common on the back roads and they weren't sure and the, they did not get out and try and wade into the actually his girlfriend did try and wade into the river but she, wasn't, she didn't yeah she wasn't a 65 year old man in the under I'm thinking of the Lonely Planet, uh, where they're 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 reading the Lonely. Pl I think it was Lonely Planet, the the guidebook. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The guidebook was was that was that actually 
that text? Was that in the guidebook? Yes. I went, okay. Yes. You just read it. The and way, the cover yeah. of the Lonely Planet guidebook's really good, too. Because uh-huh. it's like eight shirtless men doing handstands. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just, like, I, it was like a lot of little things like that. Just having things that were funny, but not pointing out that they were funny, I guess. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, so. Just letting it yeah, life Yeah, in that way, reveal. Lonely Planet's happy that we're not making fun of their book. And yeah. We're not. It's just it's just like a funny it's just funny seeing these two old men with this book with like naked men on the front cover. Crime um, matching older characters with with what, they're three generations back, maybe four? Um the the, the, the girls? Yeah, the the fa- the uh-huh. distant family. Yeah. And I thought I thought, okay, this is gonna be, you know, a gimmick. I thought it was, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, but you guys actually rest with, with them and you and you and you visit the dynamic you 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 very like you you dig into that and I was curious about that that choice why did you we just wanted to have something that would contrast these guys and we were thinking that uh, a younger relative because Martha's real relationship to Earl Lynn in life uh-huh. is exactly exactly yeah um, Ellen the character yeah, my mom's first cousin Earl Lynn's my mom's first cousin uh-huh. so Forget how exactly we decided that that would be. I, just, I think we were just like we should have. I think because our friend Carrie that plays his cousin, we wanted to involve her. We wanted to have a part for her because she's she's been in all my movies and uh-huh. we really love Carrie and uh-huh. um, just be funny to for her to kind of be smart ass to Erlen and them to like have this sort of back and forth, um, lovable but mm-hmm. you know. They pick on each other, mm-hmm. and it gets to see a uh, you get to see a different side of Erlen's character, and mm-hmm. one where he's a little bit more not in control of the situation. Like he's always the one who wants to dictate how things yeah, are yeah. going, and Carrie's character doesn't want to have that happening. And my wife Elizabeth, who plays uh, Janet in the movie, is just kind of there in the, as an observer, watching all this unfold. And uh-huh. um, yeah, I think it's just a new uh, a kind of a new dynamic, and then. It's rarely visited in films, and that's why I'm impressed by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I see it in the in, in the real world, there's there's a malaise. There's there's okay, this older person speaking to me like, and yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting um, insert in there. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Erlen and I hang out like we're you know we're close, and he's one of my favorite relatives. So it was just really like fun to sort of put that our our relationship on screen with you know Carrie. I feel like in a way it was a loving tribute to your relationship yeah. with Earl Lynn to um <laughs> to guy, I mean he's just he's just like my favorite person in the world. Yeah. I just I love him so much. So it was yeah, um, it was fun to do that. I'd like you to discuss the role of setting and um how it underlines um their mindset through their through their journeys or their respective journeys. Um I don't think it's an accident that they start off in in a major metropolitan city and then venture off. Usually, I think if I'm a tourist, I would go to the you know the must see sites in the, in the Grand Wilderness. But they start off. In Reykjavik. Yeah, and I was wondering if you could. Yeah, I think a little bit of it is about you know their their sort of um, their voyage, I guess, and the way that they change over the course of this week. And it, you know, I I like to think that. Erlen's character is a guy who's um, constantly wants to have his hands in something, and he feels like he wants to he wants to live forever by by trying to be this young person or trying to mm-hmm. uh, party. And and and, I, and his character's arc sort of like he actually comes into his own once he's away from those things and and realizes like he's okay with the slow like slowing down. Mm-hmm. It's all right, and it's not. It doesn't mean he's he's losing his edge if he sits down and does a crossword puzzle or is a wingman instead of the aggressor trying yeah. to find a woman. So I like how that that yeah. gets th- because I think like I, I mean I'm not I'm not a 65 year old man but I can I can imagine just like how that how that must be troubling and sad when you're used to being like the life of the party and you realize you're becoming yeah. an old man. Yeah. So the, I mean it's mental and physical are, are two different Right. Yeah, and he's always he's always worked, and he's always you know filled all the other time with you know uh, the, the characters put all the other time with the parties and and always always having something to do. And uh-huh. you know, like he says in the movie, now he doesn't have anything to do. And 
coming to peace with that and needing each other to come to peace with that and also needing the landscape uh, to go back to your original question mm -hmm. uh, to find the solitude with each other to do that. No, 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 right. Paul, and with Paul, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's like, it's about a guy kind of, no, we just say like becoming comfortable with himself. Yeah. And that, that whole thing is sort of a tribute to, you know, at least the way I feel like I feel like I need to, to get outside of myself and maybe go to some place less distracting to sort of feel uh, at peace or... I mean, it's a scary segue moment in their lives. I mean, it's, the, it's mm -hmm. potentially the last chapter. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really like ageism in film as just that theme. I mean, you aboard a couple of other themes, but I just thought that that was really, you know, spot on. And, and I think a lot of people can maybe not identify sure. to it but but can get a sense oh okay this is what these type of people these are what those type of people are, are potentially wrestling with yeah I mean I've, I think I've said this before it's just I feel like for me I'd much rather watch movies about what other people are going through and then like I don't I like to like I feel really uh, a lot of interest in um watching films about like older people because it makes me think about my dad it makes me think about you know my family and and it's really emotionally heavy for me to be thinking about it, it makes me realize how other people feel like uh -huh. this and I don't know I'm just noticing your pin on your on your the 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 title cards for Land Ho and I, I thought that was actually a cool choice to, <laughs> for the when you um, when you detail the, the where where the setting is, uh -huh. I, I think it, there's three title cards throughout the film. Yeah. Um, could you talk about that that visual choice? I guess. Well, I mean, when we were first cutting the film, we I don't think we really sat down and thought, oh, I think let's put one here, here, and here. Uh -huh. we just as we were cutting it, just made sense to put them in, and we did, and then it. Uh, I feel like it gives the film kind of chapters. I feel like the film has a, a prologue, three chapters, and an epilogue. And uh, you do know that you're responsible for a, a, probably there's going to be a, a upkick here in tourism over there. That yeah, will I happen. Hope so. I hope that they give us a key to the country. Yeah. And like Iceland Air, just like let's just fly whenever we want to. Just fly over for fun. Yeah, just like oh, Martha and Eric. In relation to the titles uh, and the font and color choices, that we wanted the movie to, you know, it's about these older guys, but we wanted to have the movie have a lot of sense of fun and, you know, like you were talking about, like uh, youthfulness, playfulness. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually don't think that. Um, here you're saying that this might be the last chapter in their lives, but it also we, might not be. Yeah, anymore. we hope we end on a note that makes you think that these guys are. Still, still going. Yeah, they're they're not they're not they're not thinking of their grave in the final. Would you watch a Lanto oh. sequel? <laughs> I would watch the prequel. <laughs> Ooh, we have to think about who would play them. Chris Pine and. Uh... <laughs>